Now let's talk about the U.S. economic system. It's really different than the rest of the world. We've succeeded for well over 200 years now, and we have all kinds of bumps, warped, and everything else is in the economy. But let's look at some of the reality of it, because we really do have an economic engine that really keeps the country moving forward. Here are some definitions you have to know. GDP, GDP, gross domestic product. That's a measurement of all the goods that a nation produces. GDP, you have to know that. That is part of our class, and it also is part of the world of business. Whenever you start talking about the world that's out there, you have to really have a good grasp as to what they're talking about big picture-wise, and gross domestic product really changes with the overall health of the economy. And you'll see here, United States, you can see how small it was way back in the, in the 1950 here in the United States. Now look at over here in trillions of dollars. So you have a huge differences. You'll see a change in different nations by the time they're done. And here's you'll see Russia over here. Uh, they're, they're probably bumped back even further by the current governance they have. Brazil is a sleeper nation right now. I'm telling you, Brazil is, is on the edge of leaping forward economic, economically. India it has a huge, robust internal economy. It's one of the world's biggest capitalistic societies. And frankly, there's a lot of major innovation and a huge population of almost 1.4 billion people. And just the top 10% 10, 10 of that, their brain power is almost bigger than the whole country, United States. It's huge by the time we're all done. Japan, what a cool culture. But one of the problems they have in Japan really is that the work ethic is so powerful. The government waged a campaign about five years ago trying to get people to go home because a lot of people were dying at work because they're working so hard. What an incredible culture, what an incredible people. China, I view as a nation that's bound by, by communism. Communism, I put in quotes, it's a nation bound by an authoritarian dictatorship over there. And I wish they would take the chains off because the people there are brilliant, hardworking in every aspect of it. And I believe if they were a free country, they would be having an entirely different economy and the world would change dramatically with them. The United States over here, we're at $21 trillion as an economy. And we really have an economy that focuses so much on service sector. We're 80% in the service sector and 20% manufacturing. If we would actually start shifting that, it would be interesting to see what would happen over there. A couple of numbers you have to know, you have to know GDP, the unemployment rate, which really is the number of civilians, at least 16, that are unemployed and try to find a job in the prior four weeks. That's how we sit down, and that's a definition, the working definition of that unemployment rate. So that being said, you can see the numbers over here. It depends, this is 1989, 2020. We had a huge population, to some extent, a lot of people left the market. We had a couple of strange numbers over here in 2021. It, a lot of people just left work. Like a lot of people, I'm talking 11.3 million people quit. And they just left the work overall. And then, th then we thought that was over with. We had a bigger number the next year. So that being said, the numbers are really strange in unemployment. We have a lot of people shifting over into what we call the gig economy or they're self-employed in a different way soon as we had the pandemic and people realized they didn't have to be in, this, in the area to do work. A lot of different things happen. There's four kinds of unemployment you have to know about. Frictional unemployment, that's people who quit their work because they don't like the job, the boss, or working conditions. Yo, hey, I'm out of here. I don't like what you said. Yeah, I'm leaving. I think I'm leaving. By the time you're all done, that's frictional unemployment. You left, okay? Um, there's structural unemployment, that's caused by a firm restructuring. They're trying to get their business to operate better, so they might have to go through some downsizing, some shifting. That's structural unemployment. That's also capitalism. That's also why a good reason to get a college degree to make certain that you're more valuable, if at all possible. Cyclical unemployment occurs when you have a recession or similar downturn. We'll talk about the definition of what that means, but sometimes the economy tanks the business tanks at the same time, they have to just survive and watch their cash burn in the process. So we'll talk about what cash burn means and all that definition later on. And then sometimes there's seasonal unemployment where it's just that time of the year. In summertime, you hire a whole bunch of bodyguards and everything else and fall, you lay them off. Come tax time, you hire a bunch of people to do taxes and come April 30th, you lay them all off. It's pretty common for seasonal unemployment and having different structures. So you have four kinds. 
frictional, where people quit and change jobs for different reasons. Okay, structural, where you have the, the businesses restructuring itself. Cyclical unemployment, where there's a cycle that happens that's accompanying the economic downturn that may hit or an economic uptick sometimes in the process they actually reduce that number, and then seasonal unemployment. Other things you have to know, inflation, a general rise in the prices of goods and service over time. Occasionally, you have this thing called disinflation. I almost never saw it until about the last decade, and you'll see disinflation where prices actually drop because the economic condition is so dire that people start dropping prices overall. So you see that, and we have that going on occasionally here in the United States. China just went through a massive amount of disinflation to reduce prices overall. Then you have deflation in which prices are declining. And then you have stagflation when the economy is slowing down, but prices go up anyway. Okay, we've experienced that. So all four of these have happened here in the United States in the last 10 years. And I've never seen it happen prior to that. So we have all kinds of different things happening on a regular basis. A large part of it is Congress playing games with the economy by pumping 40% more money than the, what in one year than previous, and we're still suffering the repercussions of massive overspending and out of budget. And so you'll see different aspects of this start flashing and damaging the economy overall. Sometimes you'll see hyperinflation, when sometimes you'll see people going through with inflation rising 50% a month. Wall Street Journal one time uh, drove down Venezuela, held the $20 bill out the window and got bids. And in two blocks, the value of the $20 bill increased by about 300%. These people were bidding for the $300 bill and he's asking for prices. That's how bad it is. Inflation rate went 63% 2014 to 481%. And 2016. And by the way, if this is a dictatorship again, and Venezuela is one of the richest natural resource countries in this entire hemisphere. It's too bad that they don't release people and let them be free to sit down there and practice and, and make money in the process without sitting having to control every aspect of them. Hyper socialism, hyper control, hyper dictatorship in the process. It's unfortunate that the people have to go with that. We have a lot of Venezuelans coming here to the United States, risking life, limb, and body to be free, which is the coolest thing that we have going for us in the United States, that freedom. You'll see when inflation can grab control of the economy, you almost come to a standstill on almost everything in the process. You see here a picture of a gal. That is not bread or meat or steak she's weighing there. That's money. She's trying to sit down and figure out how much money is going to cost in the process to pay for the goods because there's such inflation and the money is so worthless. The five pillars of economic system, you have to know those. I'm going to talk about them in more detail. Private enterprise, competition, private property, the profit motive, and the consumer is sovereign. Those are the five pillars. And watch, you need to know the definition of inflation, the four types of unemployment, what CPI is, okay, consumer price index, and productivity. In other words, how much more volume each worker puts out, the national debt and monetary policy as we go through this area of the economic system. Take care.